Today we will be looking at combinations. And this is similar but different from permutation. Okay, so remember for permutation, it was the number of ways to choose things when when the order mattered, right? Number of ways to choose things when order matters. And combination has a very similar definition. It's, a, it's also the number of ways to choose things But the order doesn't matter here. Order doesn't matter. So let's say uh, we have a group of, I'll use this, the same example as I've done with the permutation. We have a group of 100 athletes And the number of ways to choose first place, second place, third place was by permutation because the order mattered. If I'm choosing three athletes, A, B, and C, it depends or it's different. If I put A, B, C like this, that's different from putting B, A, C. So even though I have the same three athletes, if I change the order, my choice becomes different. For a combination though, it's going to be, the question would be something like this. If I have 100 athletes, and I'm just choosing three athletes from this group of 100 athletes. I'm not assigning uh, them first place, second place, third place. I'm just choosing three athletes. Okay, so if I, if I choose A, B, and C, these are my three choices, but if I choose B, A, and C, it's really the same choice because I'm not really assigning any value to the, my first choice, second choice, and third choice. Choosing three athletes as A, B, and C, or B, A, and C is basically the same choice. Right? I'm just choosing, let's say that a country is choosing uh, three of its 100 athletes to participate in the Olympics. Right, then choosing athlete A, B, and C, or choosing athlete B, A, and C, it doesn't really have any difference, right? The important thing is that you've been chosen, that you are one of the three choices. So the important thing is that you've chosen A, B, and C. It doesn't really matter if you've chosen A, um, A first, or B first, or C first, right? So this is combination. This is permutation. Permutation, the order matters. For combination, the order doesn't matter. Okay, so let's let's look at this example here. 100 athletes choosing three athletes from a group of 100 athletes and see if we can figure this out. Okay, so remember for permutations, for permutations, we've decided or we found out that the number of ways to choose three um, first place, second place, third place was 90, uh, 100 times 99 times 98. Okay, but this actually doesn't work with combinations because this actually counted A, B, and C and B, A, and C as different choices or as A, C, B, right? It counted all of these choices as different choices. Okay, so the same choice has been repeated a couple of times here. It's actually not the same choice when you think in permutations, but when you think as combinations, um, they're the same choice. All of these choices are the same. They're all concerning athletes A, B, and C. So if we divide this number by the number of times the choice has been repeated, number of repetitions, then we can just end up with the unique choices in terms of combination. So how many times 
have a choice been repeated here? Let's say if we have three athletes, how many ways, how many different ways are there of arranging these three athletes into three places? And here you can think of permutations. There, there are three different ways or if we're considering A, B, and C, there are three choices for our first place, two choices for our second place, since we've already chosen one athlete here, and one choice for our third place, since we've chosen the first and the second place, right? So there are, multiply these, there are six choices of rearranging the same three athletes into different positions. Okay, so we've used permutation again to find how many choices there are of rearranging the same three athletes. So if you think back here at the combination, the number of repetition is six. Each of the choice, each of our three choices, or each of a choice of three athletes has been repeated six times by rearranging them like this into six different ways. I've only written three here. Okay, so let me see if we can rewrite that. I'm choosing 100 athletes, or from a choice of 100 athletes, I'm choosing, choosing three athletes, right? And remember, to, I'm, I'm using this to generalize. That was 100 factorial for the permutation part. It was 100 factorial and 100 minus 3 factorial, right? This gave, gave us all the possible permutations. But now we have to divide this again by... 3 factorial because this is the number of times our choice of 3 athletes has been rearranged, right? We did that to find the number of choices that the same, the number of ways that the same choice has been rearranged. So that's why we need to divide this again. And this makes sense because the number of permutation is going to be greater than the number of combination. Right? If you're choosing, by the way, the way to notate this in terms of combination is 100C3. Remember for permutation, it was 100P3. This is always going to be bigger than this because here we've counted A, B, and C, A, C, and B, B, A, and C, B, C, and A, C, A, B, C, B, A, right? We've counted these six choices as the same. Or we've counted these different for the permutation part, but for the combination part, we're, we're counting this as one, just one choice, right? So this is gonna have much more options than combinations. Okay, so let's see if we can figure this out. If you're choosing just three athletes out of a group of 100 athletes, what will our value be? And remember for the permutation part, it was 100 times 99 times 98, and that was 970,200. And we've divided that by three factorial. Or we are dividing that by three factorial now. Or 3 factorial is 6. So if you divide that by 6, we get 161,700. Okay, so if we treat the way we, peak, the way we um, pick the athletes uh, differently, or the, the order in which, to pick, in which pick, we pick... Whoa, I can't speak today. Okay, if we treat the way we pick or the order we pick each athlete differently, this is going to be our number of choices. But if we don't consider the order to be important, this is going to be our number of choices. Okay, so it's, it's been reduced by six. Okay, so let's 
let's write the general formula. Combination. Okay, so if you're thinking of a group of things where we just want to know how many different ways we can choose R from N, and we're not cons we're not considering the order as important here, then that's going to be the n factorial. Remember, this part was the permutation part, n minus r factorial. This was the permutation. And you have to divide that again. You have to divide this again by r factorial, because the r factorial is the number of ways that r can be rearranged. right? But we're treating that the same in combinations. Oh, I shouldn't put it equals there. All right, so this would be the formula for finding the combination.